All right, this video is going to be a tutorial for Zaus. I'm not exactly sure if that's how you're supposed to say this. Maybe it's supposed to be kind of like chaos or Zao, Zaus, I don't know. But I'm just going to say Zaus. Um, this program is a interactive fractal zoomer. So what that means is it draws fractals and you can zoom in on them and see all the interesting little details that um, fractals have. So uh, I'll put the link to this page in the description and you can download this program for free. It's open source. You can download it for Windows, Mac, and Linux right here. So go ahead and do that and then we'll start up the program. Okay, so when you start up Zaus, you'll be greeted with an image like this. This is one of the most famous fractals probably. It's called the Mandelbrot set. But it's really um, pretty amazing just how complex this shape is considering how simple the formula that creates it is. So this is just one of the several fractals that you can play around with in Zaus. But this is one we'll mostly be looking at to try out different settings and things. So um, first of all, the most important feature of Zaus is that you can click and hold down your left mouse button on a particular point and you will zoom in on that area. So I'll, like right now, I'll click right here and we'll start zooming in on that spot. And you can get to see how complex the shape is. For example, look right here. This is a shape that is almost an exact copy of the whole original shape. And that's one of the defining features of Fractal, which is called self-similarity. So it means it has areas, uh, parts inside of itself that are similar to the original shape. You can just keep zooming in and see more and more self-similar shapes. But as you can see, the farther we zoom in, it looks the um, detail on the edge of this, the boundary of this shape isn't quite the same as the original one. But the reason is just because the uh, approximation level isn't as good. So what you can do is go to Calculation Iterations and increase this to something like maybe a thousand. And then now you can see it looks a lot more like the original shape. The uh, reason we had to do that was because basically the way these fractals are calculated is by iterating a function over and over again. So the more iterations we do, the closer and closer it gets to approximating the actual result. So at the beginning it was only 170 iterations, which isn't that great, but it's good enough when you're zoomed out. But when you zoom in farther, you usually need to in, um, increase the iterations to get a better looking result. But then again, increasing the iterations also makes it run slower because it has more work to do from when it calculates each pixel on the screen. You can also use the uh, right mouse button to zoom out. And you can see it's kind of slow. If you want, you can go to UI, I guess that stands for User Interface, and increase the zooming speed to like 2. And then it'll zoom in and out faster. Um, you can also use the up and down arrow, I think, yeah, to increase and decrease the speed. So if you want to zoom out faster, you can just use those the arrow keys on your keyboard up and down to increase and decrease the speed. And you can see it goes really fast now. Almost too fast. So probably around two or three is all you'll need. <clears throat> so this is just a fun program to play around with. And just you, know, you can just zoom in and see all these little details. It's really amazing just how complicated the shape is um, based on such a simple formula. If you zoom in down here, it's just really incredible how complex it is. There's another copy of the original shape, but um, we need to increase the iterations if you want to see it more accurately. So you can go back up to calculation iterations and increase it there, or you can actually use, um, we use the up and down arrows to increase and decrease the speed. You can use the left and right arrows to increase and decrease the iterations. So we can increase that to like 2,000 something, and then probably be able to see it a little more accurately. There you go. And if you're wondering, you can if you notice um, the design is pretty pixely looking right now. That's because there's no anti-aliasing. But if you want to turn that on, you go to filters, anti-aliasing, and then it'll have a smoother look to it, which is nice. But it takes a lot longer to render each frame, so it's a little slower, but um, it looks nicer.
Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just turn off anti-aliasing just because it makes it a little too slow for this. Also, if you want to change the colors, because these colors aren't necessarily the most appealing, um, what you can do is go to Fractal, then Palette, Random Palette, or the shortcut is P. So you can just press the letter P on your keyboard and it'll randomly change the color to something else. So you can just try that a couple times until you get something that you like more. You can zoom in and see what it looks like. Just press P and you get random new colors. Another thing you can do is uh, go to Fractal Out Coloring Mode. So this, these are all different options of how it determines what the colors on the outside look like. So if you pick one of the other ones, you get a different kind of design on the outside. So that's fun to play around with. Press P again to change the color scheme. You can try these other out coloring modes. There's some, you can do this one smooth, which just makes kind of smooths out the edges between the different bands of colors. You can also do in coloring mode. This changes the colors of the the black area inside the shape. So uh, I don't like those as much. And let's see, I'm going to go ahead and just go back to um, Fractal, reset the defaults just to get back to where we started. And then um, there's other things you can play around with, like, um, let's see, for example, if you go back, let me go back to this smooth setting so you can see how it smooths out the colors. But then you can go to Bailout under the Calculation menu and increase this to like 10. And you can see it kind of smoothed out that circular shape we had on the outside. Also, another thing I forgot to mention is in the Help menu, there are a bunch of tutorials built into the program, which you should definitely check out. They're very helpful, very useful. Give you some basic information on what exactly are fractals, an overview of the features and different and how they work. So definitely check that out. And then let's see. There's some other settings you can play around with. Like for example here, you can do pseudo 3D. It's kind of weird, but when then we zoom in, it looks like that zooming out right now. Other things you can do, um, you can go to, let's see, calculation, you can turn on rotation. So like this, so it just continuously rotates while you're zooming in, that's kind of fun. And another thing, I'm going to turn that off first. Another even cooler thing is you can go to fractal palette, you can make the colors change while you're zooming in and out. So what you can go to is color cycling, but you can see um, we need to enable palette emulation filter first. So you do that, you go to filters, palette emulator. And now, let's see, okay, go back to palette and then color cycling, or you could just press the Y for a shortcut. Now the colors change while we're zooming in and out. So that's pretty neat effect. This is just all the Mandelbrot set we've been using, but there are other fractals built in also. Um, I think the Mandelbrot set's the most, definitely probably the most famous and one of the most interesting ones, but you can play around with these as well. And there are even more down in this menu. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And yeah, thanks for watching.